Roasting garlic gives it a wonderful mellow flavor. I'm just going to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil to thoroughly coat the outside. I have a whole head of garlic here with the skin on it. And then I'm going to wrap it tightly so that it kind of steams as it roasts and put it in a 400 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. T-bone for two is one of the dishes that I can remember making when I was very young with my grandfather. And it was a perfect steak because, um, as you can see, the bone goes right down the middle of the steak, which is why it's given the name T-bone. Uh, it has a, a strip steak on one side and a tenderloin on the other side. Uh, the loin steak um, is much more of a steak-like texture. It's a really wonderful flavor steak. And this actually comes from the beef tenderloin, um, also sometimes called a porterhouse steak. This one actually looks more like a porterhouse steak because it has a large portion of the filet on it. And um, my grandfather used to make this in a cast iron skillet, which is what I'm going to show you, the way I'm going to show you to make it today. And it's very simple. You just want to season the steak on both sides with a little bit of uh, freshly ground salt and pepper. And you want to heat your cast iron skillet to right before the smoking point over about a medium hot um, flame. And you can tell when the skillet is ready because you're going to hear the sear and the sizzle when you put the steak into the skillet. And it can go right into the hot skillet. And that's the sound you want to hear. We're going to cook this about three or four minutes per side. Uh, and then we're going to reduce the heat and continue to cook it for about five or six minutes more. While the steak is cooking, I'm going to show you how to make a roasted garlic aioli sauce. And um, you want to do this, I start by putting my bowl on a damp kitchen towel so that it doesn't move around while I'm whisking. Um, aioli is traditionally made with egg yolks, but I like to make it with whole eggs. Uh, it makes it just a little bit lighter. So you need two whole eggs about a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. Now you could use lemon juice in this if you like. Um, I like the taste of white wine or tarragon vinegar. About a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a little bit of sea salt, and a little bit of freshly ground uh, black pepper. And you just want to whisk these together until your egg yolks are broken and everything is um, thoroughly mixed. And then you want to start slowly adding your oil. Uh, I'm using canola oil here. You could use a safflower oil or any kind of vegetable oil. I, don't, I wouldn't use a good olive oil in this because the flavor of the garlic is so strong. That's really what's going to um, determine the flavor of this sauce. And you just want to slowly whisk your oil in, very slowly. Until you see it, it'll start emulsifying. And it'll get thick and creamy. Uh, it's not going to get as thick as a mayonnaise uh, because we want it more as a sauce than like a, a mayonnaise, but the mustard also helps it emulsify. So just slowly add your oil and you want to continue to whisk the whole time you're adding it. And once it starts to get thick, you can add the oil just a little bit faster, but you don't want to do it too quickly. Uh, it may cause it to break. And then once all of your oil is incorporated, we're going to add the garlic. Now our garlic um, has been in the oven roasting for about 40 minutes. You can tell when the garlic is ready. Literally your whole house will smell wonderful like roasted garlic. Uh, the garlic will also be really soft to touch. You can tell when I squeeze it, it's very soft. And you want to let your garlic cool a little bit. Um, if you add it when it's too hot, uh, it'll cause your sauce to break. But you can get the um, garlic out of the cloves by just slicing the end of the garlic off. And you want to make sure you don't get any skins in it. And then you can squeeze this directly into a bowl. You can see how easily the garlic comes right out of the, the cloak. And roasting the garlic gives it a much milder flavor than using garlic that has not been cooked. We're going to see how our steak's doing. Um, I've turned it over um, and it's cooking on the other side. Usually during the cooking process, I like to hold it up on the end so that that um, 
and where the fat on it gets nice and crisp too. And if you can just hold it here for about a minute, it'll crisp up the fat on the end of the steak, which also gives it a really wonderful flavor. And then usually I just take my whisk and just mash this a little bit before I add it to the salt. Make sure all the skins are out of there. And if there are any parts that are really brown like this, you just want to toss it up as well. Then I let that cool just a little bit. And while that's cooling, um, I'm just going to add a little bit of freshly chopped tarragon to the sauce. But I love the flavor of tarragon um, with steak. This is really a nice flavor. And we have some nice fresh tarragon here. We're just going to give a little bit of rough chop. And that can go right in the sauce. And just stir that up. We can add the roasted garlic to that. In the sauce, uh, you could easily make this sauce a day ahead of time. Um, just refrigerate it until you get ready to use it. But you can see how nice and creamy, what a wonderful texture that is. And the, it's really better to make it ahead of time. Uh, it'll have a much more um, of a garlic flavor after it's had time to sit for a while. We're going to see how our steak's doing. This is a perfect steak for two people to share. As you can see, um, we pulled it from the skillet and we let it rest for about five minutes. You always want to do that uh, when you're cooking meat. Um, you know, let it rest before you slice it. And when I serve it, I like to cut it off the bone and you just go around the bone. Um, it's easier, I think, with a bony knife because it's got a little bit of a tip on it. And if you wanted, you know, as um, you could cut this in half and it would be plenty for two people to share. Um, or in the case of my husband, he usually wants this whole side of the steak. Just cut around the bone there. And I usually serve this with uh, roasted mashed sweet potatoes. I think the, the steak and the sweet potatoes. And then this is my favorite part. This is actually the little tenderloin of the filet. So perfect, easy supper. And then right before you serve it, you just want to spoon a little bit of the sauce on one end of the steak and on the plate. And the, the flavor of the garlic and the uh, mustard and tarragon in the sauce is a really wonderful complement to the steak. And it makes it a wonderful, uh, easy, simple supper that you can do in a cast iron skillet or on a grill.